This is Dave with Tailwater Outfitters, and today we're going to tie the Q-tip minnow. So this fly is a great pattern to imitate bait fish in the backcountry, up and around dock lights, uh, especially in the wintertime here in Florida. When our bait gets a little bit smaller, we need to downsize some of our, uh, our flies that we're using. And uh, I first saw this fly was as a bass pattern and really what I did is I modified it a little bit especially the hook uh, to make it really kind of salt water equipped and ready to deal with these uh, snook and juvenile tarpon. The materials that we're going to need for this fly are the Tiemco TMC 800S in size 2. Again you could change the hook uh, if you so desired, but that's what we've been using uh, with this pattern. Some extra select marabou. And for our uh, pattern today, we're going to use white. You could change up the color of the tail, certainly. We're going to use some 25 thousandths lead wire to just help it sink a little quicker. Some quarter inch or six millimeter eyes. And then of course, what really kind of makes this fly unique is that it's made out of baby blanket yarn. So we're going to need just a little bit of yarn. This specific baby blanket yarn is made by this company called Bernay. And they make all different types, but the most important thing to look for is up here is that it's 10 and a half ounces uh, is how they delineate the, uh, the size for this specific yarn. It comes in all kinds of sizes. Uh, so obviously I have almost a lifetime supply here with this giant piece, but I'm just going to use about a foot of it today. All right, we're going to start off by putting our TMC 800S size 2 hook in the vise. I'm using a white thread today just because that's the color uh, yarn that we're using. The thread color isn't all that important. I might try to just make it match. Uh, but, you know, I have uh, played around with using a little bit of red to try to give some of the... Uh, bleeding gills kind of a look. And I'm just going to put a general thread base down first. Next, we're going to come in with our, our lead wire and uh, get bobbin out of the way here. And I'm just going to put down about three quarters of an inch worth of this. I'm going to cut it for now just so I don't have to fight the, uh, the spool. We'll wrap this on fairly as close as I can. But again, I, I do roughly three quarters of an inch. I'm not going to measure it too much, but I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm fairly familiar. I don't want to crowd the eye of the hook too much here. So that's, I'm going to try to slide this all back just a little bit. And there we go. We'll call that good. And now we're just going to come over top of that. We could super glue it if we wanted to, but this is, it's going to be underneath quite a bit of that yarn that we saw before. So we just get a little base over it. But if you wanted to seal it up with some super glue or something, you could. All right, we're going to come back again to where the uh, bend of the hook just starts. And then we're going to get our marabou quills. We want two healthy quills. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have these nice wispy tips and they're great but we definitely are going to need the quill itself through here uh, because this minnow pattern is actually an extended body. So part of this tie is going to be off the hook just aft of uh, the bend. And so we're going to want roughly two times the hook length and then maybe two and a half right about there. That looks good. And we'll go ahead and tie this in. A couple loose wraps, and then I'm going to pull a little tighter. Make sure it's not going anywhere. And get those quills out of my way. I'll clean this up just a little bit. I don't have to go crazy. And then we will work the thread aft again. And we're pretty well set. Those quills are in there, and they're important because that's the structure that we're going to build off of next. I'm going to come all the way back up towards the front here. I'll leave a little bit of room behind the eye. About the diameter of the eye, eighth of an inch, something like that. And then I'm going to tie in this uh, 
baby blanket yarn. Again, we got to get that kind of that cord in the middle, cinch it down real well, keep it away from the eye. And we're actually going to wrap all the way aft on the hook, off the hook, around just the marabou, about three quarters of an inch. And then we're going to wrap again forward and come all the way up. So it'll give you a little sense of what's going to happen here. And we're going to keep it pretty tight to each other. I'm getting close to where I'm going to come off the hook. That's pretty close right there. You can wet your fingers, whatever you need to. Make it a little bit easier to deal with this. And now I'm going to start coming off the hook. And you have to keep positive control at all times of the yarn that you're wrapping and the marabou quill. If you let go of one or the other, it'll tend to unwind. And uh, there's you're just, just going to take a little practice. It's going to feel awkward uh, just because it's really different. Uh, you can see here I'm just kind of pinching it with my finger and thumb. I'm throwing the uh, yarn over the uh, vise and pinching it again. All right, that's pretty far back. I'm happy with that distance. And so now I'm just going to come forward again, pinch. This is a really important part. I'm going to pinch that hard and then wrap these really tight. If that section is loose, this fly could come apart when we're trying to cast it. So obviously we can't have that. And again, I'm just working my way forward. And I'm pretty close. I'm at the hook again. Thank goodness for that. Life will get easier. It really makes you appreciate what your vice does for you all the time. And so you can see that's that's pretty stiff. It's stout. It's straight. You know, that's important. Obviously, we want this, when we strip this fly, we want it to, uh, to not go darting too far off to the side. And then I'm just going to keep wrapping this forward. Now we had that little bit of space in front of our lead wire to the hook eye and we're going to wrap this all the way up to the hook eye but that that space gives us a little bit of a stair step down that will help build a little bit of a head profile and that rolled a little bit forward on me which is okay but i don't want it to just yet and that's good there Usually I'll just take, kind of take my bod, bob in here, put it over a couple times, and we're doing just fine. All right, that's nice and snugged up. And now I'm just going to stroke this uh, material back, get some finish wraps on it. It's not going to go anywhere and you'll see you'll get a little bit of this fluffy stuff coming off but that's just where we uh we cut those fibers off that cord and whip finish my vice came unlocked on me and there we go so the tie is done as we get ready to uh, put the eyes on, I usually kind of just, with my fingers, almost kind of like if we were using an EP finger brush on uh, some of those brushes that we use quite often, I just kind of try to work that baby material out. So we can see it's, it's pretty symmetrical, but there is a little bit of shape to it. But the only trimming that we'll need to do is a little bit here at the head. And we're gonna fix that too somewhat when we put our eyes on. That's pretty good. I'm going to raise this in my vise just to make it a little easier to see. Where The other spot where we're going to trim is here from the hook back to the marabou. And I usually take this out of the vise if, if it's easier for you to do that. But we're just going to do a little taper back. You can get a sense of uh, how we're going to do that. I'm going to take it out of the vise just because it's so much easier this way. Try to keep it so we don't lose focus here. But it's much easier if I just lay the hook, uh, the kind of the, uh, the start of the cutting point here with the scissors up next to the marabou and trim forward. 
because the last thing I want to do is cut that nice marabou uh, plume off the back. So that's going to give me a little bit of extra tail action for when we strip this fly. So you can already see that it's starting to get that profile. Needs a little bit more trimming in there, but I'll come back to that later. All right, so last thing are the eyes. So I'm going to super glue the eyes on using some gel super glue. And then I'm I like to keep my eyes up pretty darn close to the hook eye. And then I can put a little coating of UV resin over top of it. So I don't have to worry about the super, if the super glue comes undone and I lose the eye, what I actually have is a, a one solid piece of UV that comes over each eye, around the top, onto the eye, then back. I try not to encase the whole front I still want this to be very much a fly, um, but I'm just trying to make sure that I don't lose these eyes too quickly. As these eyes go on, you know, there's a, you can put them on directly parallel to the hook, but I, because we're putting it up so close here to the eye, the hook eye that is, I like to uh, angle them slightly so that it'll push a little bit of water. It's a subtle difference, but it's one of those things, certainly if you're in darker stained water. Do that again if you're in darker stained yeah. water. Yeah, if you're in darker or stained water, um, having a little bit of push on the front of this fly seems like a relatively insignificant thing to us, but the fish really pick up on that. And so if you can get another one of their senses to tell them, hey, that's real, I need to eat that then uh, you should absolutely take advantage of that. So again, there's the eye. I'm not going crazy with it, but as I rotate this around, you'll be able to see that they're set at an angle, each of them. In a perfect world, they would be exactly the same. So do the best you can. The reality is it's not gonna be exact, but uh, like I say, just do the best you can to, to get them as symmetrical as possible. And if they're a little bit off, it'll give you a little bit of swimming action. So now we're just gonna come at this with some UV resin. This is thick resin. Uh, really seems to be a little easier to work with because you don't have to fight gravity too much. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit on each eye. And I'm gonna put a little bit and just kind of inject it into that baby blanket yarn. So we've got one continuous set of uncured epoxy. Bodkin can be a great tool. I like to use my ring finger a lot of times so that I can kind of stabilize myself. And I'm gonna push this around, try to keep my finger out of the epoxy. Push this around again. Tough to do if you've just had your second cup of coffee for the day. And there we go. So I'm pretty happy with that. And because it's the thick epoxy, I can take my time with this part and just kind of let it set out. When you put that epoxy on top of the eyes, it'll really dome them out and uh, really make those pupils stand out a little more. We're gonna call that good. And so one last thing that I see with this fly is I, it's not gonna impact its fishability whatsoever. But if you look at, I got some of this fluffy stuff that's all up inside here. It's really not that big a deal, but a great, whenever that happens on a lot of your fly patterns, a, a really great tool or one of these carterizing tools. Uh, we get them, I think from EP flies. We have them in the shop. Uh, the yeah, and we'll, we'll put that in our description as well to have a link to this. This is a wonderful tool that really a lot of times was a, a great way to set plastic doll eyes in some of the EP patterns, but it, it only takes a second for this thing to heat up. It's got a couple AA batteries in there. And all I'm gonna do is just run it right through there real quick. It's great, it'll take care of that issue very quickly, but also it doesn't care what it burns. So if you touch your thread wraps, you can make your fly come undone. So um, phenomenal little tool to really clean up your flies. And those eyes are on there. They're a little crooked, but that's life, I suppose.
But there it is, that's a Q-tip minnow. A little extended body pattern, kind of modified from the bass world. And uh, the, the, here it is in a size two. In a size four, it would be a really, really good pattern to use for dock light fishing. And uh, it's just another little something different you can have in your fly box for those days where you're just trying to dial in what they're after. It could just be this. So if you want to uh, give the Q-tip minnow a try, we have links to the uh, materials required to tie this fly, minus the baby blanket yarn. Although if you're in the Tampa area, swing by the shop, we'll have some in here and we'll give you a couple feet of it because I got plenty. If you like this pattern, hit the like button and be sure to check out our other fly time videos.